We are catching up with a rock star in the science world, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. So it's only right we set the appropriate mood. Yes. Are you ready? Ooh. Yeah. It's like we're in space Ooh. now. Yes. I, I love what you've done with the place. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, he is also the director of the Hayden Planetarium at the American Museum of Natural History and, of course, best-selling author. In fact, in his latest book, Story Messenger, Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization, he challenges readers to view life's most discussed topics through a different lens, a scientific and cosmic lens. Hmm. The concept is fascinating here. Yeah, I think it, it's overdue, actually, okay. because what happens is you're living here on Earth, crawling around on the surface of this tiny planet, mm -hmm. and especially recently, we've all become tribalized. Oh, yes. We say, you don't agree with me, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. but, but meanwhile, we're all humans. We're all homo sapiens on this one planet. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a kid, you'd see the schoolroom globe mm -hmm. and the color-coded countries. Why, why did they do that? Mm. It's to tell you who your enemies are and who your friends are, because from space, Earth is not color-coded. Yeah. You see Earth as nature intended you to see it. That's so good. Like oceans and clouds mm -hmm. and land. Greener. And so this is a book that tries to get you yeah. to think that way about Earth, okay. not this way about Earth. I like that. I like that. So we have to talk about your future predictions. I was just looking here for the year 2050. Oh, well, yeah. I, that's, I put them out there just so that I can be shown but how wrong I was. But people love this stuff. Or, no, okay, but, or how right. right you are. So listen to this. <laughs> Self-driving electric vehicles replacing our current cars, I believe Completely, that. but can I tell you why sure. I even said that? Because in 1905, you look at any photo of any city, yes. there's countless horses everywhere. Sure. Mm. 15 years later, you yeah. couldn't give away a horse. Right. Wow. All wow. Place. And, and we built civilization on the literal and figurative back of horses for wow. thousands of years. But Neil, what about gone. this one? What's that? 2050, humans having the ability to regenerate limbs, you think it could be a possibility? What? Newts can do it. <laughs> Lobsters can do it. Why can't we? <laughs> okay. Wait a minute, let me let that marinate. That's true. Yeah, yeah, please. Hey, look at the animals that can just grow another limb. Right. Like, and think... when we know the genomes of these animals, maybe we can, like, I don't know, but maybe we can, like, pluck it out and put it in put humans it in and, and, and line up the veterans first yeah. who, who, who are disabled from that. Yeah. Right. There My brother's go. an amputee, so I'm sure he's There it is. Put him in the happen. front of the line, and, and the lobster will say, hey, you finally caught up with yeah, us. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's also a prosthetic technician, so he might, I don't know how he feels about the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, the visiting alien, mm. this, this concept, oh, if an trope. alien came to... Yeah, it's right up your alley, Dylan. I love this. I'm all, all right, go I, for I'm it. not authorized Talk to comment to further us. on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if you were. No, no. No, so in, uh, as a trope through the book, I wonder what would an alien, a visiting alien say about what they see? Mm -hmm. And in one example, I just give, they come to Earth and they say humans dividing ourselves, waging war against each other based on what side of a line in the sand mm -hmm. you, you were born on, uh, what's your skin color, the yeah. reflectivity of your skin, mm -hmm. who you sleep with, who you worship. And they would surely just run back home and say, there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> but you know what, Neil, it's kind of true. I know, yes. That's why. That's why I wrote the book. Thank you. No, that's is. why I wrote the book. Kind of true. You know is what like, it is? We don't think of it that way. You don't think so of it's that. it's interesting that an astrophysicist comes in and says, "Okay, let's look at this." Differently. Because the cosmic perspective is not just let's try to agree in the middle. Maybe there's another place you can look at all the problems, and you realize you never had problems to begin with. Neil, one of the things I've always enjoyed about you is that you you do a great job of of doing what you're doing in this book. You bridge this gap between pop culture and science. And then I, I read this recently that the, the film Titanic, you watched this film and you became so annoyed by something in the film what was that? that you decided that you would pester James Cameron <laughs> incessantly for years. What was it? What? Okay. He, he We're showing opening you right up old wounds. We're showing you. Oh, you got the clip here. Oh, okay. You brought the receipts. All right. So in that scene where Kate Winslet, after she d ditched her dead, frozen boyfriend. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's looking up at a night sky. We know where the Titanic sank, that it was a clear sky, no moon, and they showed the wrong sky in the film. It's, so it's, 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 yeah, the wrong. Not, no, it's not only wrong, the left half of the sky was a mirror reflection of the right. It was a lazy sky as well as a oh, wrong sky. And I was wow. just like, oh my gosh. But so for 15 years, he pesters James Cameron to the point where they finally put out like a new version of the film. Yeah, right? No way. And they corrected the sky. No yes. way. But just to be, just to be clear, uh, Cameron loves science. Okay. And, and even in Avatar, there's a deep infusion of science in there. Right, yeah. With the interconnectivity of the creatures. I love it, love and the thing, we have the USB ponytail. 
tail that they plug in oh. to the to uh -huh. the to the ground and yeah. the animals. And so this so is he all appreciated. Yeah, yeah, no, he yes. definitely. That, that's why he fixed it. He that's said, amazing. "Oh, I, I don't want to be on record yeah. for having the wrong sky." That's come, amazing. Come back, please do. I love the time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> By the way, Story Messenger: Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. The book right there on your screen. It's available right now. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.